All right. Um, so I've also included in the chat, um, again, the link to download Rhino, which Nadia also posted in course link. And then below is also um, a link to on the Rhino website. There's a list of all the commands. Um, it may seem overwhelming, but they're just all there for your reference. Um, I'm just going to pull that up now just to kind of show you both how to navigate, because I know downloading can be tricky sometimes. Um, all right. So if everyone can see my screen here. Um, so when you click on the link, it should bring you to this page. So you just select the evaluation version and this will be um, a free trial for 90 days, giving you full access to Rhino. Um, make sure you download this version um, and it'll also email you a license key, which you'll have to type in um, once everything's downloaded on your computer. Um, and which make sure you do that as well or else you won't be able to save or export any of your drawings. So just keep that in mind. Um, and then also, if you can see here, this is just the list of all the different commands. Um, there, this page is also really helpful. I'll just show an example. So if you click on, for example, one of the commands, it'll show you um, like a full description on what it, I guess, represents. And then also it'll show a video of what it does. So these, this is really helpful if you're trying to figure out how to do something. Um, you can always go on here and search um, the different commands. So I'm just going to pull up Rhino. OK. All right, can everyone see the Rhino? There should be four different viewports. Yep, awesome. Yeah, Thanks. you can see that. Okay, great, awesome. Um, there'll also be a little um, kind of like home page that'll show different options such as new, recent, or open an existing file. Um, but you'll probably want to start with the new file. So I'm just going to go. So once you open up Rhino, you'll see the few um, four different viewports. Um, so to get started, I'm just going to show you. Can everyone see a file kind of template or page? Yeah. With, yeah okay, we awesome. Can see that. Centimeters, meters. Yep. Okay, awesome. Um, so when you open up Rhino, um, it'll bring you to this page where you can select the um, units you want to be working in. Uh, for your models, I would recommend doing meters uh, since they're quite large in sight um, and size. So um, you can select, there's large and small objects, which Small objects, I believe, work with a tolerance of 0 0.01 um, or 0, 0, 001, and then large are 0 0.01. So it's just a, in terms of accuracies, but for now, it doesn't matter too much. So let's just select meters. So now everything that we work in will be um, measured in meters. Um, okay. Once you've downloaded Rhino and you open up your file, um, let's say I wanted to change the units or I forgot or I made a mistake, you can always type in units in the command bar and then it'll bring you to document properties and then you can do the same thing that we did before there as well. Um, okay. So Rhino essentially it works in play, um, different planes. So you have your X axis and then you also have your Y axis. And then to give it three dimensionality, we also have the Z axis. So as you can see here, there's four different viewports. Um, we have the top view, um, perspective view, front and right. Um, in perspective, you'll be able to see the 3D geometries, whereas in top view, it works as a plan. And then front view, or um, I guess there's also um, back view would be elevations, and then right and then left are also different um, uh, orientations of whatever you're making. Um, if you draw in, let's say, we drew in one of the views, you'll be able to see it in all the different viewports. So this is great. If you're drawing something in plan, you can see how it looks like in um, perspective and then vice versa. But starting out, I would recommend uh, working in top view or plan view just so that you can maximize your page. So to do so, just click on this button up here and then um, it should say maximize, and then this will expand your single viewport, and you can always change it 
back as well. And then also if you wanted to change the views, there's also the options here in this um, section. So to get started um, drawing your um, 3D models for your project, um, what I would recommend doing is bringing in a base map from Google Earth. So to do so, it would be the same instructions as before when we did um, brought one from Google Earth and brought it into Illustrator. Um, so when you download it, make sure you download it at a high resolution and then also make sure you download um, the site plan with a scale. So then that way, when you bring it into Rhino as well, you can make sure the, that the um, scale adds up. So I've already gone on to Google Earth. Um, so to bring in the map, you type in the command bar. Um, so for example, picture, will bring in any kind of JPEG image. So right here, I have one of Larry Garden, for example. Um, and sorry, I'm just gonna turn on my grid snap. So you can bring in your picture and then see it shows in your, um, your viewports. I would recommend just making sure it's in the top view or plan view, just so because you'll be drawing in 2D first and then extruding everything. Um, so just to keep it relatively simple to begin with. Um, so right now, if we want to check to make sure if this is to scale, so our um, scale bar at the on the map that we've brought in is saying that's 10 meters. But if I measure it out, this is just rough, for example, it's saying it's about 0.675 uh, meters. Um, to, so to scale this up, I'm just going to So I'm just going to divide, we're going to find, figure out what our scale factor is. So for example, 10 divided by 0.675 is about 14.8148, but I'm just going to do two decimal places. Um, so to scale our drawing, um, just select your image and type in scale into the command bar. Scale 2D is what you want. And then it's going to ask for two different reference points. So you're going to select one point of the map, and then it'll ask you what your scale factor is. So we calculated it's 14.81. And then if we look, our map increases. So now if we go back and we measure out the scale bar, it should be about 10 meters. So now then when we work in Rhino, this should be anything we draw will be to a scale accordingly. And then when you export it at all the different scales. So for example, if I wanted to export it one to 500, um, there'll be options. I'll go over that after, but you wanna make sure that you're modeling everything either one to one, um, just to kind of keep it simple. Um, so then later you can export it to how, whatever scale you like, um, but your base model or your base map is preserved. Um, since, um, I don't know how I can show this, but if you look in Rhino, you can really work in big, um, measurements. So if your sites, for example, is 200, like a kilometer long, you'll be able to map that in Rhino. Abby, um, can you do that one more time? Can you just show yeah, people how, sure. you, how you did the measurements? So that scale one to 10, uh, 10 meters is the scale bar that she got from the image on Google Earth that's on the yeah. bottom. Yeah, or or you can actually measure, like use the ruler in Google Earth and go across like your site. You know, remember how we measured using the ruler tool um, in yeah, Google so Earth? I'll just, I'll just go and back then you can measure it. that. So you can search in whatever site you have. Yeah, I'll just go over this one more time. So for example, I know Millennium Park is the full thing, but we'll just go into this part of the park. Um, so if you can see, for example, if I zoom in to about, I think it's about 300 meter eye level, sorry. Yeah, so you'll be able to measure, for example, that's what's a good part to measure. Uh, let's say we wanted to measure the width of the walkway. Or 
I'll do this part. Why is it not? So for example, that would be about five meters in width. So then if we go back to Rhino, you can see here, it's also about five meters. Um, but I'm just gonna show you again how to export this just as a reminder. Why is this? Sorry, I'm just gonna turn off that. So let's say we found, um, we've got all the um, extents of the plan that we want. Um, so if you go to the top um, and save image, it'll bring you to these options. So make sure that the scale is on. So if you can see here on the scale, this would be about 50 meters. And then the title is not necessarily um, important since you're going to be doing all your titles in Illustrator or on your working software. Um, same with the legend, but just make sure your compass and scale are there just to help you orient um, yourself when you're modeling. And then you can save that. Oh, sorry. And then just make sure you choose a higher resolution so that you're able to capture and zoom in and see all the different um, smaller parts of the site that may not pick up if you had a, I guess, a less qual like a lower resolution image. And then you can save that as a JPEG and then you'll be able to bring it into Rhino as well. That, that's, so that's great, perfect. Little... That's perfect, great. And then we go back to Rhino. So now we have our site plan all scaled. Um, so Rhino essentially works similar to Illustrator. So there's a lot of features in Rhino that do work similar to Illustrator in terms of drawing and drafting. Um, especially for the 2D options. Um, so for example, layers, we can see here that there's same options such as visibility, you can lock your layers and then also change the color of your layers. Um, these will also come in handy when you're doing, um, wanting to show, for example, trees as a, like a light green or different colored um, objects or parts of the site. Um, you can always change this after and then they'll show in some of the different um, kind of more rendered options, but for now, I'll just show how to draw 2D and then I'll go into that more detail after. Um, so for example, you want your base map to be on a separate layer than anything you model, so then you can lock it and then that way anything you draw on top, just like Illustrator, um, will be, it won't ruin or move around this drawing. Um, so we're just gonna call this base map for now. And then anything else, um, you can just add a layer by right-clicking new layer or, sorry, I'm just gonna drag this out so you can see. New layer, or if you click on the layer, it'll also give you some more options. So let's say I wanted to change to red, you can do set current. I believe also if you click on this arrow, or sorry, the check mark here, it'll switch to that layer. Um, you can also, um, sub layers can kind of get a little bit confusing. So just try and stick to more basic um, layers when you're organizing your file. And then if you drew things on your uh, map, you can also select all on that layer as well. Oh, sorry. So select objects. Yeah, and that will select it, but I don't have anything drawn yet. So it's hard to show. Um, okay, so that's layers, how they work in Rhino. Um, before I get into drawing, there's also some options at the bottom. Can everyone see where it says grid snap, ortho, planar, O snap? Um, they should all be at the bottom. And then there's also some um, projection um, options on the left side as well. Um, so these essentially are going to be, um, how do I explain it? They're like restrictions when you're drawing. Um, so you can turn them on and off to help you create your drawings and make certain things more accurate. For example, um, I'll get into, sorry. So for grid snap, the first one, um, I'll just show, so this is a polyline, um, which is similar to the pen tool in Illustrator. So as you, as you can see, I have grid snap turned on. 
grid snap, essentially what it does is every point on the grid, it will allow me to draw a line. But if I take it off, see how there's more um, movement and it doesn't restrict me to only points on the grid. Um, so this is great if you're drawing things, I guess, in increments of one meters. Um, and also, if you're importing the base map, it's great to set it on the zero zero axis just to kind of keep everything organized. So that's grid snap. Um, ortho, it works. It's also another restrictive um, tool that you can turn on and off. So let's say I'm drawing a line. Um, what ortho will do is it'll only draw from a certain angle um, from the previous point that you've anchored. Um, you can turn it on and off by hitting the shortcut um, F8. So see now I can I have full range in terms of what I where I can put my next line. But then if I hold also shift holding down shift um, turns on ortho or F8. See how now I can only move up and down. Um, I guess at like 90 degree angles. So that can also be good if you're drawing, um, for example, any kind of straight lines or um, perpendicular lines, um, ortho is great to have on. And then planar, what planar is, is it restricts um, everything in the drawing to a certain ax axis or on a certain plane. So um, since, like I said, Rhino works in three dimensional space, um, if you're drawing a site plan and you have planar on, it'll only draw things. Let's just say, I know it's, sorry. It'll only draw things. So if I look here, I don't know if you can see on that two dimensional space. Whereas if I have it off, you can kind of, it's kind of hard to tell with the lines, but see how um, it kind of moves up and down on the Z axis, whereas this is all on the Y and X. Um, so if you're drawing any kind of, or drafting any two dimensional shapes, um, planar is great to keep on, um, but if you're starting to draw more 3D, um, make sure you turn it off. Um, or you can turn it on if you want every all your objects on the same level. Um, so I'm just gonna get rid of these. And then the last one, smart track. So smart track, it, what it essentially does um, is it finds temporary reference lines that kind of predict your next move. Um, great way to describe this. So let's say I was just drawing a shape. Um, so for example, you can kind of see that kind of transparent line. It's picking up um, a perpendicular or an angle where see how it's just moving on that tangent. Um, it'll just kind of help you guide your drawings um, and connect the anchor points better. So if I had it off, for example, um, it, if I wanted to draw a proje or project a line straight from there, see how there's not that kind of guide to help where if I had the line, it'll kind of help me guide my drawing. So I kind of see this as like kind of rulers when you're drawing or drafting in real life. They're, these are kind of your guides to help um, keep your drawing, I guess, um, on specific angles that you want. Um, and then what else? Gumball is more of a tool when you're working in 3D. So um, I'm just gonna go back to perspective. So, oh, sorry. So let's say I drew a box. So gumballs turn on as of now, but if I turn it off, see how those arrows um, disappear. So gumball, what it essentially does, it allows you to move your objects easily using these different um, arrows. So for example, the black moves it along the x-axis, whereas these ones move it um, on those Whereas these can also help rotate your object. Um, the only thing with gumball is it's not as accurate in terms of the angles that you um, think, or you can type in the angle, but if you're going to move something, I would recommend using the move command. So for example, if I type in move, 
Um, oh, you can select your object and then select a specific point on your object you want to move. So then that way you're able to move it. You can also type in the coordinates, coordinates or you can also move it to a specific point. So if you look, it's kind of hard to tell in perspective. Um, but if I look from the side, this point, so you can't see our state site plan, but this point is directly connected to the point on the site plan. Whereas if, let's say, let's say I just use the gumball, and wanted to connect it. It's really hard to kind of see it in space. So if I go back, see how it's inaccurate. So if you're wanting to move something to a specific point, um, the move command works better than gumball. But if you're just kind of moving and um, shifting your shape, then the gumball tools are better for that. So I'm just going to delete that. Um, so that's those are those um, restrictive commands at the bottom here. Um, these are also similar to the smart track. They kind of find points on your drawing um, to help you connect the anchor points easily. Um, so for example, if I disable these and they're all off, I can kind of draw in space, but it um, won't allow me to snap the, I guess, anchor points together. So if I just um, put it back on, see how now it finds the point and connects it accurately. So now if I have a curve, um, everything's all together. Um, where if I disable these again, you can kind of see here it's not, um, I guess it's like more of a, an assisting tool. Um, so I like to keep these points on and then you can kind of uh, specify if you want to find endpoints, near points, um, any kind of point on the in your drawing um, or object and the midpoints, center points. So for example, a center point, let's say I wanted to draw or find the center of my map, it'll find that for me. But if I have it off, oh, let's say I disable, see how it doesn't, it takes those guides off. So these are great to have on, especially um, for just accuracy. They really, really help um okay so those are the like kind of more the functions that are really important to know um so also just kind of keep these in mind when you're drawing sometimes things will be turned on and it'll kind of get in the way of what you're trying to draw so just keep in mind these options um i'll go into the more commands on the side here now so like i said before polyline um which is similar to the pen tool in Illustrator, what it does is it creates, like Illustrator finds acre points um, and connects line segments. Um, so here we have a joined, um, these are all curves as well. They're like the line segments are called curves. Um, and then we also have the uh, point curve, which is similar to the curve pen tool. So see now I can create a more, curved shape, whereas this is more, um, works with straight lines. Um, there's some other options, but typically you'll probably only use the first two within these. Um, you can get into these after, but they're a little bit more complex. Um, so those are the two kind of more drafting basic options. So Another, you can also use offset. So let's say I was drawing a path. So let's say, for example, I drew a line here and you wanted to offset this to about 1.7 meters. You can click on your curve or your line that you've drawn and type in offset. And then you can type in the exact um, distance and then see how now it keeps it um, the same distance throughout your path. So this will come in handy. You can essentially draw one side of each of the pathways. And then if they're all the same throughout um, your site, you can know that distance and then just X, um, 
sorry, offset them all. Um, also with roads, offset can come in handy because you want to make sure you have um, an accurate distance. Um, and then what's next? Um, the join tool, which will come in handy as well. So let's say I created, I'm just gonna draw the hedge here, or the, sorry, the garden here. So I'm just gonna draw them in different segments. So I'm gonna turn off Smart Track because it was getting in the way. Um, okay, so we have our three different lines. So see how now they're all separate. If I wanted to join them together, especially with these hedges, I would probably join them because they're all one um, hedge. You can select all the lines you want and type in command join. And then now what it does is it finds the anchor points and connects them together so that this is all one shape. Um, this will come in really handy when you're starting to extrude um, everything on your site plan, um, just because in order to extrude things and make them to uh, three, 2D shapes into 3D um, geometries, you wanna make sure that everything is connected. Um, so, now that's all joined. Um, if we go over here, we have our circle tool. I'm just gonna go here so you can see. So the circle tool, you can um, type in a specific diameter or you can type in um, a specific radius point um, to make a circle. So let's say, for example, trees, um, if you knew the diameter or the radius of a tree, you can type it in and then it will make it. So for example, let's just say it was two meters. So now we can see that it's a perfect two meter um, radius. And then this ellipse tool um, creates more ovular shapes um, from a, a line segment. So if I knew this, I guess can come in handy if you're not using circles and you're making more ovular shapes. Um, and then the arc tool kind of works similar to the ellipse tool. So if we create a line, um, it uses an angle um, from there's a midpoint and then depending on the angle or the point that you want your curve to end at, um, let's just say we'll do 45 degrees. See now this is a 45 degree angle and just works from those um, line segments. And then rectangle, similar to Illustrator, you can just create basic shapes. If you hold down shift, um, that allows you to create squares. Um, it makes all the four sides the same. Um, you can also type in the other length or corner if you knew the specific lengths of your uh, rectangular shape. Um, there's also the polygon option. So if you go um, to polygon, it'll ask you how many sides you, on your shape you have. So for example, let's say we wanted to do a hexagon. So we have six and let's just pick a random point. See now we have um, the six different um, sides to our shape or let's say we want to do an octagon. Now we have eight. Um, it just has to be more than four or else it would be a rectangle, um, but you can do five as well. Um, uh, the fillet option, so let's say I drew two lines. Actually, this may probably be a better so if I go back to my base map, this may come in handy if you're drawing um, the sidewalk. So let's say I drew these parts. So if I select these two lines and I click this option, oh, it'll see how it kind of joins. I know it's not 
the perfect, but it'll for some areas in your site plan, this may come in handy to um, join these two line segments using a curve um, perfectly. So I'll just join that. So then now it's all one. Um, surface, okay. So surface will come in more handy when you're making 3D. So um, essentially for something to become a surface or a, um, a poly surface, you wanna make sure that it's joined, like I said before. Um, so surface tool, if I just draw, it works with three or four points in space to kind of make a surface. So if I go to our view, um, any kind of surface will show, um, I guess these lines and how they're connected inside where the curves and line segments, they don't um, since they're just curves. Um, but if I go, for example, to shade of view, see how this is almost like a shaded surface is, I guess it's kind of self-explanatory, whereas these are still just lines. Um, so you can use the surface tool if you know if there's three or four points, but let's say I had a more complex shape. Um, so let's say we wanted to turn this, um, actually, I'm going to go back. I'm going to start making one of these hedges. So let's say... I'm just gonna trace this real quickly to show you guys what I'm talking about. So you probably wanna make sure a little bit more accurate in terms of where you put your anchor points, but for now I'll just okay. So let's say we drew our hedge here, um, and I want to turn this into a surface so that I can extrude um, my shape. So I'm going to click join, just so that it's all one. Um, and the command for doing so is called planar surface. And what this will do, oh. Should be doing oh sorry I think I forgot okay yeah now so now you'll see um these lines in our shape will mean it's a it's a surface I was gonna turn off the base map um. Whereas before they were just lines. And then now you'll see we have the surface. Um, we can extrude up. So let's say we know um, that these hedges, I'm just going to go. Sorry, I'm just going to get. So can everyone see Google Earth? Um, so what you'll start to do when you start to make everything three dimensional is you can use the Google Earth. I don't think you can use this, but. You, you could kind of guess by like the people yeah. and the scale, right? So like a person is a meter and a half or a meter 60, right? Yeah. So you could kind of gauge that next to that. Yeah, and then you'll be able to, once you know or kind of guess these um, dimensions, you can go back to your map. So a lot of it will go, you can go back and forth to kind of see how things would look in real life um, using the street view. So let's say these hedges were about two meters. I know that may be a bit high. So once we've created the surface, um, you can, I think it might be higher. I think they're like three meters. Three. Yeah. yeah. They are quite high. <laughs> they look like one story. Yeah. yeah. Usually one story is about three meters. So even a bit more, I think. Okay. So let's say extrude surface. So we have our shape and you just click on the surface you want. And then it'll ask you how, I guess, tall or how 
big you want to make them. So let's say we'll, we'll do three meters. Now you can see in perspective view, we've kind of created um, the 2D surface into a three dimensional shape. Um, I don't know why that didn't move off the green. So if you move, for example, that up, that will just um, fill in the entire shape. I'm just going to join these. So they should be all one now. And then if I move around, you can kind of see. So the site plan's all flat, but then we can see our hedge is starting to form. Um, so you can extrude uh, surfaces, and then you can also, I'm just gonna go back and delete this. You can also extrude curves. So for example, let's say I wanted to extrude this curve, it'll ask us, um, right now it's only allowing us to extrude along that um, plane. So if I wanted to extrude and make this taller, you can use that option. Or let's say extrude the curve. We want to extrude this. You can also do the same with just curves. I just find it easier to work with um, planar surface because um, it'll extrude it all together. Um, instead of doing individual curves, especially if they're not connected. Um, you can also extrude curve taper. So if I select my curve, it does the same thing, but I should be able... Can we, because that's on... Abby, can, they're asking if you could extrude oh. multiple elements at a time. You can just you have yeah. to hit the shift button. Yeah. So if I wanted to do, you can also too if you do. Let's for for example, let's say I drew all my hedges on one layer. You can select the whole layer, extrude, and then um, do them all at the same time. I'll, I also have my base map or my sketch model from my Yorkville Park, which I'll show you how I did that for some of the buildings. Um, but for example, sorry, I'm just going to draw this quick. So let's say And so I'm just going to answer some questions that while you're doing that. So people are asking, you could just do the basic form and then capture yeah. that image and bring it in Photoshop and add detail to it, right? Exactly. So you, you could do whatever you want. You could even import um, your Illustrator file. Like if you already create your, like what Abby's doing, she's retracing it. But if you already traced it in Illustrator, you can import your Illustrator file and start then pulling up those lines from there. Yeah, exactly. And I was going to show that as well. So what you can do, um, if let's say you did your base map in Illustrator, you can, um, if it's a uh, PDF, you can also open it in um, with the layers and all the layers will show up here as well. Um, I would highly suggest maybe working in one first and then um, exporting to another. For example, if you haven't started in um, Illustrator, you could start in Rhino and then also show you how you can export your Rhino 2D drawing um, to make a base map as well. So you can kind of work back and forth, but I would probably recommend sticking to one just instead of redrawing it in multiple softwares, just so that everything's um, the same throughout. Um, and then that way, for example, you're less room for inaccuracy. So let's say you forgot to draw one thing in one part of your Illustrator file, but then you drew it in Rhino. Um, if you worked in the one and then went back and forth, it's a lot better. Um, so I'm just gonna show, I'm just gonna show how you can extrude two things at the same time. Oh, okay. I'm just going to turn this off so you can see. So let's say we had our two hedges here. You can select the two and you can extrude and see how it, when both are selected. Um, <coughs> sorry. 
Um, you can do them at the same time, or you can just click the ones that you want. Um, so that comes in handy if you had everything at the same height um, or similar shapes, you can do it all at the same time. Um, what do I have next? Okay, um, another option. I was going to go, yeah, okay. So I'll show, for example, how to quickly export these before I start um, showing some of the more three-dimensional um, commands. So let's say I'm just gonna draw. So this is just rough. So let's say I'm all done with my base map. I'm just gonna turn this off. Get rid of this. Um, so if I wanted to turn this into an Illustrator file, um, you can select on your layers. <coughs> Sorry. Or you can directly select what you want on your model space um, and type in export. And then it'll bring you to this page and essentially it'll give you all the different options of the different files it'll convert you're drawing to. So let's say we wanted to do, um, turn what our, our drawing in Rhino into an Illustrator file, just select the AI. Um, I'm just gonna do Rhino test. I'm gonna save this, where is it? To our Rhino files. Um, so you just wanna make sure you click the options. So this is where you get into the scale. So right now I have it set. So three meters equals one centimeter which would be one to 300 um, scale. So everything, it'll show up, for example, um, if you do snapshot, it won't preserve a scale, but if you do um, specific, you can type in, so for example, um, that would be one to 500. And then you can also convert these to inches or centimeters, but just try and keep um, the centimeters to meters. Um, like similarly to the last assignment. Um, the color, um, just keep RGB, R, RGB on just because you're on a screen. Um, CMYK is probably for printing, so it would make it a little confusing. And then these options, um, you can also click always use these settings. You can always keep that on if you have a certain um, scale that you want to keep exporting at. Um, order layers. I don't think that matters too much, or if you want to order them, you can. Why did this not work? Hmm. Okay, so I've saved that. Now I'm going to open it. Um, Sorry, I'm just gonna reshare my screen now. Just loading. Sorry guys, I don't know why it's not loading. Okay, hey, while, while you do that, I'll answer some questions there. Um, yeah, thanks. Sorry so, about that. No, no, go ahead. Um, so you should, whoever is working on the model should be one person because uh, you can't work on it uh, together, especially <laughs> if you're in two separate places. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, what you could do is maybe do some part of it and then save that uh, model and then give it back and, uh, you know, pass it on to your partner if you want to uh, want to split that work. Oh, okay. there it's imported. Awesome. I don't know why it won't let me. There we go. So now you can see um, when I export it to one to 300, it'll show up with the geometries. Right now it's only showing one layer because um, we only exported one layer, um, but it'll show up all the different um, lines as well. I think I'm just gonna change my document. 
So right now it's only 11 by 17. But let's say. Also, when you do your site plans, um, it really depends on your park. I know I got an email asking about that, but um, try and stick to one. Just make sure you have all the boundaries in your um, park um, and then export it at a scale that would be appropriate. So, for example, um, this garden, which is much smaller than um, something like I'm trying to think. Um, yeah, yeah so this, this is a good yeah. size. Yeah, this one here yeah. would be good at one to four hundred or one to three hundred. Yeah, or even one to five hundred, like like uh, Yorkville Park. Um, so each each, as I mentioned before, each scale for each park will be different. Like for example, Pilly Park, you you know somebody could do it at one to one hundred or one to fifty because it's so so small, right? But for example, if you're doing uh, Park de la Villette that's something probably like at one to 3000 because yeah. it's so big. Okay, yeah. so so you have to gauge, that's that's your thought. That's what you have to select. We won't tell you, I think it's it's your kind of job to think what's the best scale to represent your park. That's part of the assignment. Yeah, and then just kind of have the artboard. So you have the two, just keep those in mind when you're drawing things as well, how it's gonna look at the end. Um, so that when you orient everything on the page, it's nicely like laid out and not, um, too cluttered or too um, empty, I guess, as well. Um, so if you, I went back to Rhino, you can see now I'm going to export at one to 500. And then I'll just name this test to Rhino. It'll also prompt you again at what you want to export it with. So now if I open going to go back to Rhino. So now this one should be the one to 500, but I'm going to bring it into the other one to show on the right artboard. So see how the one to 300, um, one centimeter would show three meters. And then this one, one centimeter is five meters. So that just kind of shows you when you export how the size will change. Um, go back into Rhino. Um, how are we for time? I know. I, I think we're good there. You should extrude, maybe yeah. then show some forms, like some basic forms. Like, for example, like if people want to add trees, they could just use poles, like cylinders and things like that. Like, maybe you could just show a couple of extruding stuff, like some basic forms. Yeah, okay. Let me bring up my model I have. Yeah, I was going to go into more um, those as well in terms of Boolean and how to um, split objects. Um, let me bring up my Yorkville. Okay, can everyone see my um, my base for my sketch model? Yes, thank you. That's great. Okay, so awesome. Um, so for example, when I made the trees, um, I guess they kind of look like lollipops, but you can really just keep them down to basic forms. So you just kind of show how big they would be in real life or in space. So it's all relative. Um, so here you can see these um, trees versus the more pine trees. Um, I'll just show quickly how to make those. So right now I have, I'm just gonna go, so essentially this is really easy. So we have um, over here as well, we have the box. And then there's also, if you right click um, the box tool, there's the different cylinder, sphere, um, sphere using a diameter and then ellipsoid, um, which is kind of like a mound or a rounded um, shape. I'm just gonna draw these all out so you guys can all see them. So right now I'm doing it freehand, like with um, just my mouse. I'm not any accurate dimensions, but you can also type them in if you know. So for example, for trees, um, you can figure out the diameter or I guess the canopy um, diameter, um, and then you can scale those accordingly in the mo um, model modeling space. And then for example, a sphere is that shape. Um, 
this will show a sphere using a specific diameter. Um, so as you can see, this is more of like an egg shape. Um, This is more of like a, I guess like a dome. Um, yes, yeah, so somebody was asking, can you draw an extruded shape on top of an, another extruded shape? Yeah, so like for yeah. example, like the eggs in space that you did the sketch, you know, mm -hmm. you can put that like egg on top of the pole, right? If you wish, right? Yeah. And then they become like a tree with the top. Yeah, so for example, um, my trees are very, Simple, I can kind of show, I'll just bring this out. Where did it go? So for example, right now they're joined or they're grouped. Um, oh, that's another, some other commands as well. So for example, explode, um, what it does, I think it's just ungrouped. Um, there we go. Okay, so now see how they're two separate. Um, so essentially for my trees, it's really simple. You can make a sphere um, with the diameter of the canopy. And then also I just did a cylinder. Um, and then what you can do, I'm gonna move this over. You select your shape. Um, you can find a point where you want to insert it. I would probably keep when you're starting to model. Sorry, so this one's harder to see. I would probably keep these different viewports on so you can see how it looks um, just to make sure everything's connected properly. Um, but essentially, once you make one, I'm just gonna group that for now. Once you make one, sorry, it's not. So I made my tree, for example, um, and you can also copy and paste using Command C, Command V. It should. It'll. Um, paste right in the same point of where you've copied it. So just keep that in mind. So right now you can see um, the two different groupings that I've copied and paste, and then you can drag it. So for example, oh, I don't know why that lagged. You can start to populate your site plan with the different trees. Um, what you can also do so let's say I've made a tree that I like, you can do, um, turn it into a block. So you can click define block and then select the object or the group that you like. And I'm just gonna call this tree for now. Um, and then essentially, if you go back into here, right click, um, if you go to insert, it'll bring you to um, the different blocks. So right now we only have one, but they'll all show up here. And then it'll just tell you some of the information about it. So then you can click on your tree and then see, you can bring it in as well. So um, when you're saving your file, just make sure um, you keep saving it, sorry, so that any kind of blocks you make will be in your library. So you can easily come and go um, from your drawing, but then you still have this kind of library of different objects, especially trees or um, for example, like something as simply as like a light post, you could do a cylinder um, for, the pine trees, what I did, sorry, I'm just gonna, oh, just gonna bring it out of there. Um, so essentially I just used a series of cones um, and layered them as well as a cylinder for the, um, sorry, um, 
Yeah, in a cylinder as well, and then group them all. But I'm just going to ungroup for now to show. So a lot of Rhino too, um, a lot of it is kind of playing around and just manipulating the different um, base commands and shapes to kind of get to where you want to be. So it's you can't necessarily memorize a bunch of steps to make a shape, um, but if you know the commands and kind of how they work, um, you'll be able to kind of make anything you want. Um, so for example, let's say I want to remake this. Let's say I knew my diameter. I'm just going to freehand it right now. So I've created the base um, or this part of the tree. And then let's say we wanted to keep it all within the same, I guess, like um, line. I'm just going to make this one slightly smaller. Then move this down. And then I'm going to make that a little wider, sorry. So now it's just sitting on top, but if you move it down, you can kind of see. So you can't directly see it right now because it's shaded, but if I go into wireframe, now you can see the different parts of the tree. Or, oh, yeah, so the ghosted poly will show better. So see, you can see the trunk and then the different layers. And then once this is all done, you can group it. And then that way it's all one shape that you can move around, turn, rotate, and then um, locate on your map. Um, so those are just essentially some basic ways to make trees. Um, um, like Nadia said, keep it very simple. And then you can always go back and add more detail to your drawings if you've made an AXO. So I'm going to show how to now make um, make 2D as the command. Uh, I'm just going to find a good view. Uh, so to make it an isometric or AXO, you can pick um, the view you want. So for an isometric, there's a different um, northwest, northeast, southeast, southwest. Um, so right now I have my whole site. Um, and this is a great view if you want to see um, or take images as well of your model, um, just to kind of see um, the full site. Um, so if you look at these, so these buildings are the taller, more condo buildings um, from the Yorkville Park. And then these are the more um, like shops and restaurants. So you can see the different heights and then as well as the subway with the different trees. Um, and then also we have some steps over here. I did take a lot out of the other site plan. And then we also have our roads, which are relatively flat. Um, so once you have all your geometries or your base um, shapes made, what you can do is you can select everything that you want to uh, make two dimensional and then simply type in make 2D. And it's gonna bring you to this, um, I wonder if I can make this bigger, um, bring you to these options. So. I just like to keep parallel on um, the view um, is essentially it's going to make 2D of the view you selected back here. So right now we have it an isometric um, in whatever orientation or direction it's facing. That's the view that we want. Um, C plane, I believe view is what it's on. C plane will show everything on the flat. Um, 
plane of that third angle projection, what it does is it takes your shape and it shows it in different arrangements. So like plan view, um, side view, and then also um, in ISO metrics. So we're gonna keep this as well. And then first angle projection is similar to third. Um, just showing it'll make it 2D. It'll make more sense once I do it, but it just kind of, um, these are just the different projections of the drawing. So we'll select view for now, um, since we want to make it an ISO. And then we want to maintain the source layer. So for example, you can't see, I can't select it now, but I have all my layers from my map. Um, it'll keep those when we do the make 2Ds, and then you can change those after. Um, tangent edges show, it's just a little bit more detail of where the different um, intersections are on your model. And then I like to turn it off just so it's a little bit cleaner. Um, hidden lines are anything that aren't visible. So right now it's in shaded um, view. So you're just seeing kind of like the shapes um, rendered almost, but with um, hidden lines, it shows everything existing beyond or in the space. So for example, if we had a box, you'd be able to see all the lines um, kind of hidden inside. So I'll turn that off as well because it can be a little bit um, distracting. And then scene silhouette is just kind of like an outline, um, a thicker outline, I believe, with the whole um, shape. I'll just keep that on. So viewport rectangle, um, we'll just kind of, when I make 2D, it'll make a box around it and then group output, we'll group it all together um, once it's done, um, which is great if you want to move it on your modeling space and then register with previous. I think when the last time you've done a make 2D, um, if, I think if you click that, it just saves all the settings from before and what you did. And then also you can name whatever you want it. So we'll call it, um, Yorkville 2D. And then once you've all selected the ones or the settings you want, click OK. Um, sometimes it takes a while, depending on how fast your computer is um, or how complex your shapes are. So right now it's showing up here. But if I go, for example, to top view, now you can see. So this is our viewport rectangle that it preserved. And then if we go back, it'll show all the lines. So some of them are a little bit faint just because of the colors I selected, but you can kind of see um, what it does is essentially traces everything in space and projects this two dimensional view of your model. Um, and then for example, if you select this and click export, um, you can export this to Illustrator. Um, I'm just going to save this to my computer. Maybe a little large for now. Um, I'm going to open up. Where did it go? Sorry. Okay, so I've just read shared it, but see now when you open up Illustrator, um, there's our drawing. And then it will have all the different layers um, and colors that you've had from your Rhino model will all be preserved. And then you can drop it in and then start playing around with the different line weights. Um, so for example, I'll just select this for now, make it thinner. And then see now you can start to add in more detail or if you wanted to change up the trees um, and add more artistic trees or keep these in the regular shapes, you can do that. 
and then add um, textures. You can also export this to Photoshop and then use some of the techniques that Diego used to kind of add um, different um, textures to your um, site as well. But those are just some options of how you can go back and forth from Rhino and really use your base model as kind of like a guide to kind of um, expand your different drawings that you need to complete your assignment. So I'll just go back. To Rhino, um, there's some other commands I wanted to show you guys just because they'll probably come in really handy. Um, um, when you're should trying we to take make... a break? Maybe we'll oh. take a five minute break. Yeah, for sure. Sorry. Let's take a five minute break. Um, maybe if you pause your yeah. your recording um, and I'll just answer a few questions. Um... Hit record. Okay, um, so I've just quickly drawn something in Illustrator. So we're gonna work backwards now. So I created, brought in my map um, and I have these different layers and I have just two shapes on it at the moment, but just to kind of show you how to take what you've drawn in Illustrator and bring it into Rhino. Um, you can save it as a PDF and then I'm just going to bring it in here. So just make sure you save that. Um, sorry, I'm just trying to show. Can everyone see my file? Um, yeah, we see the files. Yep. Okay, awesome. So if you have your PDF, uh, just right click and then open with, and then you'll be able to see Rhino. And then just click on that, and it should just easily um, open up everything. It may take a bit. So, for example, it'll ask you how to import it. I didn't scale it properly, but um, you'll just want to make sure that you um, type in the correct uh, scale units of when you convert it. So um, just think of when we brought it from Rhino into Illustrator. This is just working in reverse. Um, so for example, now you can see it's in Rhino um, and all our layers are there. They're not the same colors, but they're there, I think. Yeah, so you can see. So if you wanted to do everything in Illustrator and then bring it in, um, it'll preserve all your line works and then see, you can start oh, making this. Making this into a three dimensional shape. So it's really easy to go back and forth. Um, I would just probably just stick to one and then work from there and um, draw like the base map in one um, with as much detail as you need to start making the outline or the base model in or the sketch model, sorry, in Rhino. Um, another thing I wanted to show quickly while I had my other Rhino model, previous one. Sorry. So if you go into rendered, you it'll show um, it kind of almost softens everything. You can add um, like textures and materials and after, but that's getting a little bit more advanced. But for now, this is just fine um, to show a more simplified version. Um, but if you wanted to do so, for example, let's say I'm done my um, model and I wanted to look at how um, the sun kind of hits the site, if you go to render tools, um, you'll be able to change, you can kind of see how the shadows are casted. So this um, is great for like doing an analysis of your site, especially showing like if, for example, if you wanted to create a park or if you wanted to show or I guess shade an area more, you could kind of test it out essentially in your 3D model. So there's a lot of really cool tools in here as well that you can play around with to kind of see how it would, um, how the shapes, I guess, would um, respond in real life. So that's just another cool thing 
I used for this assignment. Um, now I'll probably get into more, um, just gonna, the Boolean option. So Boolean is kind of like um, trimming or um, splitting and joining objects. So right now I have just a circle or a sphere and a rectangle, um, which are very basic, but it'll just kind of help um, explain these commands easily. So right now they're separated. Um, but let's say I'll show, for example, there's a bunch of different Boolean options. So if you Boolean two objects, so you just, if you kind of intersect them, they have to be intersecting for Boolean oh, to work. Abby, we still oh. see your files. You might have to go oh, back, sorry. check that off. Yeah. Sorry, guys. Um, okay. Yeah. So you can see now I just have a sphere and I have a rectangle, two very basic shapes, but it'll make sense. Um, once I start applying the Boolean command. So let's say um, they have to be intersected um, or intersecting each other. And then the first Boolean, so I'll just type in Boolean objects. And then, oh, I think I may have typed in. Boolean two objects. So see how now it kind of takes the two shapes and splits them. Oh. And then if you look, it merges them together, but in a weird shape. Um, Thank you. If so, if you boolean two objects, um, if you right click before you press enter, it'll show you the di different options. So let's say I wanted two 3D shapes, but I wanted to, um, I guess, use one to cut a cert certain, um, how do I describe this? One to use one to cut the other object. So for example, you can see here the square when it intersects, it cuts this um, or it takes away part of this sphere, whereas in this one, you can kind of see that the sphere um, cuts and creates an outline of the box. So this can come in handy if you're um, kind of making more unique shapes. Um, or for example, if you had a sphere and you wanted to cut out um, holes in it, um, that can also come in handy. Um, so let's say we just wanted that one. So see now if we rotate, oh, you can see that it took away it split the two objects. So I'm just going to go back. Um, and Abby, then just show somebody uh, is asking about aligning shapes. Like, so maybe the ortho snaps and the snaps, maybe like with objects rather than in lines. When yeah. You have, when you have a moment, not now. Oh, like, yeah, no moment. worries. Yeah. Um, so where was I? Um, so let's say we have those intersected. I'm just going to show something different now. Let's say, actually, I'll make a box around. OK, so let's say we have our box. Oh, sorry, those are turned on. Let's say I wanted to cut, um, uh, use this sphere to kind of cut away at this box. Um, so Boolean difference, what that does is it'll ask you select surfaces or poly surface to subtract from. So that's going to, we're going to want to subtract from our box and then it'll ask for like a cutting object. Um, so we're going to subtract with our sphere and then see now I didn't align it perfectly, but if you turn around, it cut essentially all that space from the sphere is cut through the box. So, um, that's how Boolean difference works. And then Boolean. Intersection. Um, it'll ask for two. Um, so that kind of finds the intersection or where those two objects come together. And then it creates a shape out of that kind of merging point. Um, so if I go back, I'll just do it again. You can see where the sphere and the box kind of um, intersect. That's what's remaining. Whereas now you can see that they're two separate shapes when I go back. Um, Boolean union. 
So if I select my shapes, so now together the box, the box and the sphere are all one. Um, that can also come in handy. So for example, when I was making those trees, you could do Boolean union to kind of merge the different layers of the pine tree together. Or for example, the, um, the other trees, you can merge it to make it into one. Um, so that way it becomes one shape, or you can group them if you wanted to go back and play around with them. Um, let's just explode this. So now you can see, I'll just do that again slowly. So we have a full shape. Um, another command that's great um, or comes in handy when you're trying to manipulate your 3D geometries is explode. So if I just select the objects I want to explode, it's kind of self-explanatory. Um, it'll take every surface on that three-dimensional shape and break it into different parts. So let's say I wanted to get rid of, for example, this part of my box. Now you can kind of see, see how it's hollow. Or let's see, let's say I want to get rid of this top. So now we have the whole cut out, oh, sorry. <laughs> we have the whole cut out of the box. Um, so it's great here. Um, you can use Boolean to kind of split the object and then explode to kind of remove things as well and break it down. And then join to put them all back together um, once you're done exploding. Um, another command that's great to cut things as well as trim, I think it works with two dimensional shapes as well. So I'm just going to go back. We have our sphere. I'm just going to move this around so you guys can see. Um, so we have our box and our sphere trim, which also works with curves as well. So like, let's say I was drawing lines, I can use other lines or curves to trim parts or you can use it for 3D shapes. So let's, for example, it'll say select cutting objects. So this is going to be our, mm, sorry, this will be our cutting object and then um, select objects to trim. So let's say I want to get rid of that box. Actually, I'm just going to do the reverse so it's easier to see. So see how now we essentially just sliced using this um, box to kind of slice the top half of the um, sphere off. Um, and then I, if I explode it, you can see inside we cut that uh, sphere as well. Um, so these are just essentially great to kind of play around with these booming and cutting um, and exploding if you're trying to manipulate shape. A lot of it will be playing around um, if you're trying to make especially like unique shapes on your site. So um, just keep that in mind. Um, but the whole list of different commands um, will come in handy. Also, if you are working and you find you're trying to make a specific shape, but you're not too sure how to make it, feel free to also email me and maybe sketch out what you're trying to draw or show an image of it. And then I can maybe recommend some commands that may help you to do so. Um, so feel free to do that as well. Um, I'm just trying to think of what else. Um, I'll show you how trim works with lines because this will come in handy if you're trying to draw. And and then can you show the uh, array tool? Like yeah. so if you have like a bunch of poles and they want to group it as a huge kind of forest, maybe the array tool. I'll just draw some cylinders quick. Um, so number X direction. So it'll ask for a reference point and then see, I typed in five, but let's say I had a bunch of trees in a row. It'll ask you for the spacing and then it'll just kind of equally. So let's say five will be our number and then you can also freehand it. So let's say I had um, also street lamps as well. If there's like a um, precise distance between them, this can also come in handy. 
Oh, how did that work? And then, for example, that could be like a forest if they're all evenly spaced out. Um, so just kind of play around with the numbers on the top with array. Um, another Okay, so yeah, mirror tool is another great option if you want to quickly um, copy an object. So like a mirror will ask for um, the plane and then pick the point at which you want to mirror your object. Right now I'm just doing it with a free hand, but see if you wanted to make like, for example, um, just mirror an object. So I guess it can work similarly to copy and paste or um, if you wanted, for example, if your park was very, had like, if it was symmetrical where there's like one tree on one side, you can mirror, and then it was like the same on the other side, you can mirror um, both as well. That could be another instance of when it could come in handy. Um, I'm just gonna show trim as well with the line. So for example, let's say, I drew a shape and I'm just going to draw for now. Um, so trim is um, works similarly with curves. So let's select um, the lines you want to work with and then press enter. And then what it does is it finds the lines and where they intersect. And then you can essentially use those to trim away parts that you don't want. Um, and then that trim also works with surfaces as well. So I'm just going to go back to our box. Um, so let's say just trying to think of. Oh, can you show how to cap, you know, so if you do a curve and then it has you no know, cap on it, you know, when like, um, um, like how you did the hedge, you know, when you did the hedge and there was no cap on it, like put the roof on it. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah. I guess I can do. Yeah, I'm trying to think. So when you draw like a, a curve and then you extrude the curve and then make sure it's capped. was very quick. So like, let's say I'll get rid of this. So we have our, I guess, our bowl or our sphere. If I click on my object and um, type in the command cap, that will create a top. So it'll kind of just fill in the space um, where it's missing. Um, on the hedges, yeah, you can um, click on the, the curves or the, um, the extrusion on the top, or you can move up from the bottom, but you want to make sure it's like a full shape. Um, you can also use cat for that. I'm just trying to think. I think it's all grouped together. Um, and the last thing to show, maybe yeah. Abby, can you show like how to do basic like contour if they draw like, for example, like the rock has that weird shape, but do them like pancakes. So like yeah. steps. So just draw like a simple contour and then cap each one and they they become steps. Uh, let me see what I can draw out like a curve, simple curve, and then do it inside a curve and another curve and then extrude them. I'm just gonna draw, oh. So this will just be. He's doing this in top view, okay? So yeah. she's, So these are like essentially like contours. I know it's not very like precise at the moment, but just to kind of get the idea of how this may work. So right now they're all lines. Um, extrude curve. Um, so we've selected the outside one. Let's say it's about up. We'll do one meter, for example, and then cap that. And then we'll do extrude curve. We'll do two meters just so you can see. Extrude curve. Just 
extrusion, capped extrusion. And then we'll do three, for example, and then cap that. So now we should see how we kind of created like a hierarchy. I don't know why this one. Oh, there we go. Yeah, so see if you're making any, for example, steps, um, you can draw it all out in plan and then find the dimensions of how high you want things to be and then extrude those curves up and then cap them to kind of make um, hierarchies in space. Um, or if you had, I mean, I think my Rhino model for Yorkville was relatively flat. Um, so I didn't, there wasn't much topography, but in some of the sites there may be a little bit. Um, so for example, if you had like a more of a, like a hill, you could just um, extrude the curve. And then I believe, I think, Hmm. Yeah, getting into meshes can be a little bit difficult. But in terms of like just um, simple kind of topography, you can use the extrusion um, or draw like kind of the curve of how you want or the curve of the space and then um, extrude everything up and then cap it. Um, just trying to think of what else would be beneficial. Are there any questions? I think you covered a lot. I think this is great. I don't want to overburden them. Um, yeah, it is a lot to at yeah. first. I know that right now. So we have this recorded. I think what we'll do is we'll, we'll do that. But are there any questions that you know you may want to ask that you think is missing? Like I know. Yeah, like I said, um, Rhino, it's kind of hard to kind of memorize steps. It's kind of figuring um, the capture option. So right now I have my um, base map, or sorry, my sketch model from previously. Um, if you go to the arrow here and scroll down to capture, um, this will essentially take a picture of your viewport. So if I do capture to file, um, it'll show a preview of what the image will look like. So like, let's say I wanted to zoom in and do, take this kind of frame, bring it into Photoshop and kind of add textures or um, I didn't want a 2D drawing, but I wanted um, something to show more, um, like for example, with shadows, it can kind of help as well, um, bringing it from an image. So let's say I wanted to save this kind of view. Um, there's also, oh, yeah, so this is the parallel view I have on right now. Um, it'll just ask, ask you some of the questions and then the resolution as well. And then once you click the ones you want, it'll just ask you to name it. And then essentially it'll just show up as a file on your computer and I'll just open. Where is it? Um, so now I have a photo of just like a view in my model, um, which can also be cool if you're sketching over it as well to bring it in from this, um, bring, make it a JPEG and then sketch over it in real life if you wanted to as well. So I think, yeah, I think